All right, today we're going to finish talking about application of trigonometric functions. It says, using trigonometry to solve application problems. Decide what you know and what you need to know. Use the information to draw a diagram of the situation accurately. Decide the known and need to know, You or use the diagram given and decide what you what's known and what you need to know. Set up the needed trigonometric function to solve for the need to know, and then answer your question using complete sentences. So it says, from a point on level ground 125 feet from the base of a tower, the angle of elevation is 57.2 degrees. Approximate the height of the tower to the nearest foot. So it says, from a point on level ground that's 125 feet away from the base of the tower, that angle of elevation is 57.2, and they want me to figure out the height of the tower. So when they give you an angle, that's where you should stand, and then label your triangle accordingly. This is opposite, this is adjacent, and the function that uses opposite and adjacent is tangent. So I set up tan of 57.2 equals opposite, which is A, over adjacent, which is 125. Make sure that your calculator is in degree mode or you will get the wrong answers. So, so to solve for A, I'm going to multiply both sides by 125. That kills it, and I get little a, if you type that in, 193.96. So the height of the tower is 193.93 feet tall. Okay? Alright, so it says the Statue of Liberty is approximately 305 feet tall. So here's the Statue of Liberty. She's holding up her, whatever, her flame, right? She's got a crown. There's the Statue of Liberty. She is 350 or 305 feet tall. If the angle of elevation, there's a ship out here somewhere in the harbor, alright, and that ship if the angle of elevation from a ship to the top of the statue is 23.7 degrees, how far to the nearest foot is the ship from the statue's base? So they want to know how far out the boat is from the shore. So again, if I label everything from this angle, this is opposite, this is adjacent, so we're going to use tangent again. So I set up tangent of 23.7 equals opposite, which is 305, over adjacent, which is x. To solve for x, that's in the denominator, so I'm going to have to multiply by it to get rid of it on the bottom, which just turns it into a multiplier on the other side. So now I have x times 10, 23.7 equals 305. So now, to get x alone, I'm going to divide by tan 23.7. And I get x equals, if you type that in, make sure you're in degrees, you get 694.8093936. If we go out to the nearest hundred, this would be the distance from the ship to the statue's base is approximately 694.81. Okay. All right, you try this one. Hit pause. Come back when you're ready. Um, before you hit pause, I don't know if, I don't remember if we talked about how to convert minutes and stuff back to degrees. They're telling you from a boat on the river below a dam, the angle of elevation to the top of the dam is 12 degrees 50 minutes. Well, we can't use minutes. So all you do is you have 12 degrees and you have this 50 minutes here. You just divide it by 60 and that gives you 0.833 repeating, which means this angle is 12.83 repeating degrees. All right, and then it says the dam is 1,009 feet above the level of the river. How far is the boat from the base of the dam to the nearest foot? All right, so now hit pause and come back when you're ready. And hopefully you got the 44.29. All right, and so let's see. If I'm standing here, I'm at the boat. They give me opposite. They're looking for adjacent. 
that's tangent again, so I'm going to set a tangent of 12.83 repeating equals opposite, which is 1009, over adjacent, which is x. So to solve for x, I'm going to multiply by x, which gives me x times 10, 12.83 repeating equals 1009. So to get x alone, I'm going to divide by 10 of 12.83 repeating. And that gives me x equals. Now when I type this in, because of my rounding, I got 4430.39. And again, it's probably because how I rounded that um, 83 repeating. I didn't type enough threes on there. Um, they got 4429, which again is just due to rounding. Alright. Says a kite flies at a height of 30 feet. So the height of a kite is 30 feet above the ground. When 65 feet of string is out. So there's the string to the kite and that's 65 feet. If the string is straight line, find the angle that it makes with the ground. So they're looking for angle A. So from here they give me opposite and hypotenuse. That's a sine function. So I set up sine of angle A equals opposite, which is 30, over hypotenuse, which is 65. To get A alone, I've got to kill sine, so I'm going to use my arc sine key. Make sure you're in degrees. And that gives me A equals 27.4864265. To the nearest tenth of a degree, that's going to make the angle 27.5 degrees. Okay. Oops, skipped one. Alright, a wheelchair ramp is to be built beside the steps to a campus library. Find the angle of elevation of the 23 foot ramp to the nearest tenth of a degree if its final height is 6 feet. So here's regular ground. You build a ramp, okay, and it says they want us to find the angle of elevation, so that's what we're looking for. And it says the ramp is 23 feet and the height, the final height of the ramp, is 6 feet. So they want me to find that angle of elevation. Well, from that angle, they give me opposite and hypotenuse. So we're going to set up sine again. So I have sine of angle A equals opposite over hypotenuse. To get rid of, to get A alone, I'm going to arc sine which gives me A equals 15.1216653.1. If I do to the nearest tenth of a degree, that angle is 15.1 degrees. Okay. All right, you try this one. Hit pause. Come back when you're ready. And hopefully you got 25 degrees. All right, it says a building is... 170 feet tall, and it casts a shadow, shadows are on the ground, that's 80 foot long. It says if a person is standing up here and they're looking down from the top of the building, what is the measure of the angle between the end of the shadow, which is here, and the vertical end of the building? So they're looking for this angle up here. Alright, so if I'm standing up here, this is opposite, this is adjacent, that's a tan function, so I do tan of my angle is opposite over adjacent. To get A alone, I need to get rid of tan, so I'm going to arc tan. And that gives me angle A equals 25.20112365. To the nearest degree is going to make that 25 degrees. Okay? Alright, now we've got these double triangle things going on here. It says you are taking your first hot air balloon ride. Your friend is standing on level ground 100 feet away from your point of launch. So here's you fixing the launch in this balloon. Here's your friend 100 feet away. And she's making a video of your terrified look on your rapidly ascending face. How rapidly? At one in instant, the angle of elevation from the video camera to your face is 31 degrees. So right here, you're at this high in your, in your balloon. Okay, so if I just look at this little blue triangle, I can set up a tan function. I can say tangent of A, we'll probably say, 
equals opposite, oh, and I know A is 31.7 degrees. So tangent of 31.7 equals A over 100. And I can figure out A. Let's keep reading. It says, um, one minute later, the angle of elevation is 76.2. So in another minute, your balloon shot up here, and now the angle of elevation, let me change colors, your balloon went from here all the way up to here. And now that angle of elevation is 76.2. So if I look at my red triangle, I can set up tan of 76.2 equals B over 100. Because B would be the length of the big red triangle. So now what they want to know is how far did you travel to the nearest tenth of a foot during that minute. So what they want is just, let me change colors again. They want just this section here in purple. How far did it go? Well, if I could figure out B and subtract off A, then I'll know how far he traveled. So if I set this one up, I'm going to multiply by 100, multiply by 100, and I get A equals 61.76. If I solve this one times 100 times 100, I get little b equals 407.13. So to figure out how much, how far I traveled, I'm going to take the difference of those two. So 407.13 minus 61.76, I get 345.37 feet. Oops. Feet. That's how far the purple went. And you went 345.37 feet in that minute. Alright. So let's try another one. It says another hot air balloon one is rising vertically from a point on level ground 125 feet away um, from, the from the point directly under the passenger compartment. The angle of elevation to the balloon changes from 19.2 to 31.7. So I've got that purple triangle and then I also have the red triangle. So if I set up my function for purple, I'm going to set up tan of 19.2 equals, let's call the purple one A again, so that will equal A over 125. Let's call the red line B. Okay, so if I set up that, I'm going to set up tan of 31.7 equals B over 125. And to figure out the question mark there, to figure out this section right here, I'm going to take B and subtract A, and that will give me the question mark that I'm looking for. So first got to find it. So times 125 times 125, I get A equals 43.5296. Multiply by 125, multiply by 125, I get B equals 77. So if I take 77.2015 and subtract 43.5296, again, I don't know how far you want to round, I get 33.6719734.8. If I round to the nearest tenth, that's going to be 33.7 feet. Is that distance right here. Okay. All right, so simple harmonic motion. It says an object that moves on a coordinate axis is in simple harmonic motion if its distance from the origin d at time t is given either by this cosine function or this sine function. The motion has an amplitude of a, and that's the maximum displacement of the object from its rest position. The period of the motion is 2 pi over w instead of b. The period gives the time it takes for the motion to go through one complete cycle. So when you see how long does it take for the, they won't say find the period, they'll say find the time it takes for the motion to go through one complete cycle. They're asking you to find the period. Okay, your frequency is given by W over 2 pi. Because remember, your period is 2 pi over W, and your frequency is just the reciprocal of that. So once you find one of them, you just flip it over to get the other one. Okay? If you're given a description for simple harmonic motion, you've got to find its equation. You've got to decide if you need to write sine or cosine. If you have to pull an object down and then release it, then it's cosine. Can anybody tell me why? 
and that would be because cosine starts at its amplitude, not at zero, its resting place. Um, a, is the a is the maximum displacement. How far did you pull the object down? Calculate your W by using your period formula, and then plug everything in, and you've got your equation. So this says a ball on a spring is pulled four inches below. That means we're talking cosine, because they're starting it from its down amplitude instead of um, starting at zero. And then it's released. The period of motion is six seconds. Write the equation for the ball of simple harmonic motion. Well, <coughs> sorry, we know we're doing cosine, so we're going to do y equals a cosine um, wt. All right, so I need to figure out A, and I need to figure out W, and then I can write my function. Well, A is the maximum displacement. So since he's pulling it down 4 inches, my amplitude is going to be negative 4. Well, my amplitude is going to be 4, but it's going to start at negative 4. Your W is, well, to figure out W, you got to figure out your, your period. And my period is... 2 pi over w. Well, they told me the period is 6 seconds, so I can set up 6 equals 2 pi over w. If I multiply by w, multiply by w, I get 6w equals 2 pi. Divide by 6, divide by 6, and w equals pi over 3. So now that I know a and I know w, plug them in, and you've got your function. I use D instead of Y, sorry. So the distance is negative 4 cosine pi over 3. And there's my equation. Okay. Alright, let's try another one. It says an object in simple harmonic motion has a frequency of one half oscillation per minute and an amplitude of 6 feet. Write an equation of the form y a d equals a sine w t. So we need to find a and w again. Well, my a is going to be my amplitude, which is 6. Now to find my w, it's going to be a little tricky. My period is 2 pi over w. They don't give me my period, they give me a frequency. Well, if they're telling me my frequency is 1 half, then my period has to be 2 over 1. So now I can plug that in there and say 2 has to equal 2 pi over w. Multiply by w, multiply by w, I get 2w equals 2 pi. To get w alone, divide by 2, and I get w equals pi. So there's my w, there's my a. Plug them in, and my formula is d equals 6 times sine of pi over d. And there's my function. Alright, you try one, hit pause, come back when you're ready, and hopefully you got two. Alright, it says, an object in simple harmonic motion has a frequency of 3 over 2, which means it has a period of 2 over 3. Its amplitude is 6, so they're already telling me what A is, I just need to figure out W. Well, your period is 2 pi over W. My period is 2 thirds, so I can say 2 over 3 equals 2 pi over w. Cross multiply here. 2 times w is 2w. 3 times 2 pi is 6 pi. To get w alone, I'm going to divide by 2, and I get w equals 3 pi. So with that a and that w, we say d equals 6 sine uh, 3 pi times d. Alright, so you again try this one, hit pause, come back when you're ready, and hopefully you got four. Alright, it says an object has a frequency of seven vibrations per second, which means its period is, flip it over, one seven. And it doesn't tell, notice how they, they tell me to write it in the form. D equals sine WT. They're telling you that the amplitude is 1. So all we have to do is figure out W. 
Well, we know that the period is 2 pi over w. I know my period, so 1 over 7 equals 2 pi over w. Cross multiply, that's 1w equals 14 pi. So there's my w, so my function is b equals sine of 14 pi times b. Alright. Try another one, hit pause, come back when you're ready. And hopefully you got three. Our weight attached to a spring is pulled down four inches. That tells me I'm dealing with cosine and my amplitude is negative four. Assuming that the frequency of the system is eight over pi, that means my period is pi over eight. And my period is 2 pi over w, so I can say pi over 8 equals 2 pi over w. Cross multiply, I get w pi equals 16 pi. Divide by pi, and w equals 16. So there's my amp, there's my w, my function is y equals negative 4 cosine of 16 times t. Yeah. Alright, so how do you solve for the length of a triangle using two right triangles? Well, you set up you set up both equations and then or unknowns and then answer the question. Okay. Alright, so we're at homework, which means we're done. Happy homeworking, and I will see you next time.